Sam McEwen, first question. Unless you Hey guys, um, thanks for doing this today. Uh, I know that you guys have been practicing and uh, naturally the first question would be about how safe you feel, but I feel like you've communicated through Twitter and other means that you guys feel pretty safe. And so what I would like to ask you is just what your feelings are on sort of the landscape of the sport right at this moment and what you'd like to say to Big Ten leaders and presidents uh, as it relates to playing a football season uh, in, in, in the fall of 2020. And all of you can answer. Yeah, do you have a hmm. which one? Who do you want? Oh, do you want? yeah, I, I can. You can take it. Right. Right. You can take it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, like you said, here we we feel really safe. We feel like, you know, our our staff, our coaches have have done a great job in making sure we've been, you know, taken care of this whole time, and you know, making sure that we're healthy, making sure that we're getting everything that we need out of you know just this whole situation. Um, as far as playing football this fall, you know, that's something that we feel strong about. We really want to play football. Um, and that's, that's really our message. We want to play football. We understand that, like Coach Frost said, we're not the doctors. We don't understand every aspect of this COVID virus. Um, but at the same time, if, if it's possible, we, we want to play football. We want to be the ones to go out there and, you know, be able to do the thing that we, that we all love. Yeah, just to uh, reiterate what DCAP said, not to sound repetitive, but um, I'm thankful I'm here. I'm thankful I'm a part of Nebraska and this program and, and this community. I can say for sure that we want to play. And I think it's a general consensus across the college football landscape. Uh, when you look at what players are tweeting, what uh, I saw Trevor Lawrence, I've seen numerous, hundreds maybe. Um, we want to play football. And... I know for a fact that Nebraska is taking care of us here and our coaches, our players, this locker room, we want to play and we're going to do whatever we can do to find a way to play. Matt, you want to take that one as well? I mean, plain and simple, uh, just from even just the health standpoint, I know that this is just the best place for us because we have immediate access to any type of medical needs that we have. And if we're not here, uh, I know I wouldn't be getting the same level of care and really the type of caution that they're taking for us because at the end of the day, this staff, they care for us, the university cares for us, and they want to make sure that we stay as healthy and safe as possible. So I feel 100% uh, comfortable of um, playing a season and playing to the best of our abilities. Um, Parker Gabriel, Lincoln Journal Star. Uh, Adrian, I guess start with you, but any of the three of you guys are, are free to answer this. As the as as different um, aspects of the virus and, and potential, you know, complications, whether it's um, you know a cardiac issue or anything like that, as the research changes on this and we learn more about it, have any of those things given you pause at all? And how, just I guess personally, have you gone about? sort of squaring whether you think there's any increased risk and, and wanting to play. How's that process gone for you? Yeah, and, and that is valid. Most definitely that um, we aren't doctors, like DCAP said. We're, we're not 100% certain about um, everything this, uh, what COVID entails. But what I can say is Coach Frost even, even addressed us as a team and told us that if we're concerned for our safety, if we're worried about the heart, uh, medical problems, that he will take care of us and that he will find a way to um, test those things out. And I think that's what gives us such confidence up here on the podium today and, and our team and why we want to play so much because we know that those guys, our coaches, have our back. And, and if there is safety issues, um, he's not forcing us to play. You know, there's, there's no one being forced to play. If, if someone feels unsafe, they're, they can go get tested. We can take the necessary steps to make sure that they feel safe. You guys don't be good no, with that? Good. Got it. Uh, Sean Callahan, Husker Online. Hey, guys. Can you just talk about um, the swings of emotion? You probably all have had. I mean, Wednesday, you get your schedule. I'm sure you're zoning in on that. And by Saturday morning, um, all this talk gets to where we're at right now today. I mean, 
really, it's a lot of excitement and confusion. I mean, <laughs> really, I mean, we're, we're pumped up. It kind of looked like it, it was heading in the direction of uh, we're going to be able to play and kind of show what we've been working for. And now it's kind of taken a U-turn a little bit of we're hitting in the unsure waters. We don't know what's going to happen. But, I mean, we can't really control at that point. All we can say is how we feel. And we really want to play. We really want to show what we've been working for. And we really just want to have that be heard of, like, we want to play. We want to do this. And uh, we know that, really, it's um, they're making it as safe as we can for us. And if anyone does have these reserves or fears that – they, they can opt out, they can sit out, and no one's going to look uh, any differently at them because it's, it's a personal thing. If you truly feel unsafe, you can sit out. But um, as a whole, most of the guys on this team, we've been working for months, and we, we want to showcase what we've been working for. And uh, we, just, we just really want to play, plain and simple. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, obviously, like you said, a lot of emotions. Um, going into that, uh, I kind of like to think of it kind of as a roller coaster ride. You know, you get in, the, you get strapped into the seat, you're waiting for the conductor to start the ride, and you know, that's kind of like how we've been this whole summer, just kind of, you know, they briefing us on what to do during the ride, what not to do, all the type of stuff. You know, basically caring for us, and then you know it starts going, and you take that that slope going up, and you know every day you just kind of chip away at it. And then we get to the top, you know, they release a schedule and we're like, okay, this thing's really going to happen. And right before you kind of go down, the ride just kind of stops and gets stuck. And now we wait for somebody to come in, you know, fix the ride, come and rescue us, come, come and get us. So, uh, I mean, at this point, you know, we just kind of waiting and seeing, you know, uh, what they have for us. But definitely, like, um, there's been a lot of emotions into this thing, especially for guys that really, really feel passionate about this game of football like me. Um, really wanting to play, you know, uh, when somebody takes a game game away from you, no matter, you know, at what point in life it is, you know, you, you feel that when you really love the game. So uh, right now we kind of feeling it, but, you know, we, we also understand every day we come into this building, you know, we in here for a reason. So this morning we had practice, you know, um, maybe about midway through practice I heard, you know, that the Big Ten was thinking about actually canceling the season. And it didn't stop me, you know. I still brought the energy, still got my guys ready to go, and you know that's just kind of how how practice been for us, and how every day has been for us coming in here. We don't want to think about the negative; we just want to weigh in on the positives, and we just want to come in here every day and you know just give it all that we got for as long as we can. Uh, Steve Sipple, Lincoln Journal Star. Scott mentioned guys um, that today was a particularly good practice. Um, that he, that he addressed you before it. What was the gist of his message and why do you think it was such a good practice? I can, I can address it, yeah. Um, well, it was a good practice. Uh, like Decap said, um, we brought the energy. I think guys, guys are still optimistic that we can play this year um, because we want to play football and there's a lot of other players like us who want to play football. Um, I think uh, I think there's still a strong possibility it can happen this year, and, and we're remaining optimistic. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to get better. We enjoy being around each other. We enjoy playing football. Um, and I think in these times that are going on right now, uh, it really makes some guys uh, come out. Is if you really love football or if you don't, do you really want to play or, or don't you? And I think you see that across college football guys standing up for the game that we love to play, for the game that we want to play. Do you have a sense of the community, the fan base? How how what do you hear from them about playing, the possibility of playing or the possibility of not playing? Well, if we're talking just Nebraska, I know for a fact that people of Nebraska want to play. <laughs> I think that's uh, um, almost a hundred percent. If you asked our state and the city of Lincoln, um, our players, our staff, our community, we want to play football here. And I think across the country. Um, I see that too. I see that from other schools. I see that from players, and I see that from from college football fans. They they want the game to continue. I think um, America. I think our country needs needs college football. Uh, next question, uh, WOWT Joe Nugent. Hi guys, I'm curious if you could take us out on the practice field. 
Are you even concerned about coronavirus? How safe do you feel? What's it like out there? Do you even think about COVID-19 at, at any time? Uh, speaking for myself, um, every time I'm out on the practice field, I don't, I don't really think about it. Um, football's always been kind of an escape for me from, you know, uh, the realities of the world. The good thing about football is when you, when you cross those white lines to get on the field, nothing else matters but football. You know, uh, you could be going through it at home. You could have a million, bi a billion problems in your life. And you know, once you, once you cross those white lines and enter the football field, nothing else matters but football. And uh, you know, that's where a lot of people get their joy from it. So you know, a lot of people may be feeling the effects of COVID. You know, maybe in their families. Um, you know, maybe have lost a loved one. You know, one one of their friends may have got it. You know, a family friend may have got it, and it might really be impacting them. But one thing about football, as far as for me, I, I just know once I cross those lines, you know, that's that's my escape from everything. So, you know, with everything going on, like last night, I was seeing all the reports about the Big Ten possibly canceling the season and all of that stuff. And you know, I'm at home, so I can see it, but. This morning, as soon as I walked onto that field, I didn't think about any of that. So um, for me, no, I, I don't think about it. Matt, you want to weigh in on that one? I mean, I, 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 I'm the same way with DCAP. I mean, when I'm playing football, I, I, I don't even think about anything else besides football. And, and even here when we're practicing, the coaches are still trying to take steps to ensure that we can kind of keep a little bit of distance or uh, separation and make sure we're as healthy as possible. I mean, inadvertently, you're going to have to hit each other in football. There's going to be some cross, you know, you're, you're going to have to touch people. But at the end of the day, I mean, we're getting tested, we're getting screened. I mean, they're taking every viable step that they can to ensure that everyone that's out there is healthy and ready and that we don't really need to fear um, corona as much as, uh, as we, uh, as when we're out there. We don't, it doesn't need to be a main factor because they're, I mean, it's, it's not going to disappear or just vanish, but they're doing everything in their power to ensure that we stay as healthy um, out there as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitch Sherman, The Athletic. Hey, guys, thanks. Um, you know, one of the uh, big concerns um, from people outside is that you guys are, are going to be with the general student population pretty soon when classes start. And, and I wonder... What's your concern about that? And, and, you know, what do you plan to do to keep yourself safe? If you're playing a football season and you, you're going to class, do you minimize your time in class, do online when possible? You know, what level of concern do, do you guys have as players about being a part of uh, the student population and not being re really in, in any kind of bubble? I graduated. Yeah, yeah I, that's kind of a, a tricky um, – a tricky qu question that I'm not sure we necessarily have an answer to yet. Um, I think if experts and university presidents, if they all knew uh, what to expect when college students came back on campus this fall, we'd, we'd have a definitive answer right now. Um, I can say that I think there will be a, a sacrifice that needs to be made by the college football teams and schools that choose to play football this year. Um, I believe at the University of Nebraska right now, there I think there's an option to take online if, if you want to. Um, and so that may be something we might explore, but I, I can't definitively say one way or the other. I know the effects of, of w what will happen then or what actions we'll take to try and prevent kind of the spread within our team. Uh, Brian Christofferson, 24-7 uh, Sports. Hey guys, thanks for doing this. Um, you guys were recruits once. There's a lot of high school guys who are really dealing with a lot of stress who want to get noticed as recruits and stuff like that. Can you kind of speak through your personal experience of what this means, not just at the college level about playing, but across the landscape of football about high schools playing and if they don't play and where those guys are at if, uh, if there is no football? I think um, I think because when I was in high school, um, I wasn't very heavily recruited like a lot of the other guys um, that had like maybe 50 something offers to any D1 they wanted to go to. I didn't have that luxury. And I know there are a lot of kids like that right now, um, not knowing if they're going to have a season and stuff like that. So it's very real. Um, that's kind of a forgotten group a little bit. You know, um, the guys who really needed this this senior season, 
um, to go out there and get the film that they needed so that way a coach could see them. Maybe this was a year that a coach wanted to see them um, really do big things to see if they would extend the offer to them. And, you know, at this point, they're kind of shuffling around, kind of panicking, not knowing um, what's going to come um, out of their season, whether they're going to play football or not. So, you know, they kind of don't know if they're going to get the opportunity that they always dreamed of. Uh, I just say um, from my standpoint, uh, just knowing what, what those guys are going through, just keep pushing, just, you know, just work out as much as you can, just, you know, stay stay in tip-top shape and just keep getting better, you know. Um, the work you do never goes unnoticed. So, you know, you just keep putting that work in and just believe in yourself. And at the end of the day, what's for you is for you and, you know, it'll come. But that's that's definitely real. There are a lot of kids out there that, you know, kind of probably needed this this part of the year that, you know, right now are in a frenzy. So, you know, if, if you're one of those kids and you're watching this, just stay strong and, you know, just, just keep pushing. Just keep on working. Got time for about three more, and I have three in the chat here. So we'll go um, Landon Wirt, Daily Nebraskan. Uh, yeah, what's up, guys? Thanks so much for uh, doing this. Switching gears a little bit, I don't know if you all have the chance to see this, but over the weekend there were several Nebraska athletes and, like, some wrestlers, some golfers, et cetera, that shared an open letter to the athletic. Among other things, it called for more uh, POC representation in Nebraska athletics, as well as uh, a memorial dedicated to George Flippin, who is Nebraska's first African-American football player, as well as placing his memorial stadium. I was just wondering if you guys had the chance to take a look at that at all or saw it at all and what your thoughts on it were. Did you see it? Do you have to talk about it? I don't even know what he's talking about. To be honest. You, yeah, you, you can talk can. about it. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I saw, you know, um, this group of people got together and, you know, kind of drew that thing up. And, you know, those those are real concerns by real people. You know, um, obviously, you know, they, they're standing for something that they believe in. And, you know, it's, it's the university's job to decide on what to do with that. And, you know, they're very adamant about what they believe in and so they so they put that out there as kind of a challenge to the university and now it's kind of um you know on the university to respond um we we saw it you know uh those are some of my friends are are in that group that, that uh released it that posted it and you know i support them and everything that, that they want and you know i think i think it's very real i think it's very real that you know they may want something like that and you know in in this day and age people have to you know, voice their opinions, and the the higher ups have to be able to see that and be able to maneuver off of that. Uh, Parker Gabriel, Lincoln Journal Star. We have two more. Yeah, um, DiCaprio, Adrian. I guess this is this is related to that in in some way. One of the things, Adrian, you mentioned Trevor Lawrence. One of the things that um, he called for was an official channel um, for college athletes to have uh, representation in, in decision-making processes. Is that something that you think college athletes should have access to sort of a formalized uh, representation, or do you feel that the platform that you have now and the way that you go about communicating now um, sort of suffices? Um, you know, I, I think Twitter, as we've seen of late with what Trevor Lawrence has done, has been able to reach a, a more national level. He's been able to use his platform to um, be talked about on you know various news channels and this and that. And it's gotten his message to, uh, I think, to the people in the NCAA office and, and beyond that. Um, but also, I think it's important that the players wants and needs are addressed and are heard and I think that's a, a very valid thing um, for players to want some sort of representation um, however that however that uh, ends up coming to coming to be I'm not necessarily sure right now um, but I do think that players concerns and players questions should be addressed in some formal way hopefully moving forward Great. Yeah, say um, Adam Kruger, uh, KM3. Hey guys, thanks for doing this today. Um, 
Coach Frost, when he was up here, made it seem like, you know, he, he's very committed to the Big Ten. Nebraska is very committed to the Big Ten. He also made it seem like if the Big Ten ends up canceling, he feels Nebraska would be open to, to playing teams outside the conference. How would you guys feel about that? And has Scott Frost conveyed that to you, that that might be a case, a, a scenario? Um, yeah. After practice, I was kind of running around the locker room telling everybody we was about to join the AFC North. So, you know, we ready to play whoever. That's, that's just kind of how, how we feel right here. Exactly. Right now. So whoever it is in front of us, you know, obviously we want to play. Uh, we want to play quality football. We want to play quality teams and stay safe at the same time. So, you know, if it's the AFC North, bring them to us. And, I mean, really, we would love to be able to play in the Big Ten. But, um, like, that's where, that's, that's where we are. That's our conference. That's our home. And... We want to be able to represent the Big Ten, but if, if the Big Ten chooses to cancel, we're 100% open to playing whoever wants to play. And if, if at the end of the day um, we get to play at the Big Ten, perfect. Like that's, that's our home. That's, that's our conference. That's our place. If for whatever reason they decide to cancel and we shift somewhere else, uh, so be it. We, plain and simple, the message that we've always really tried to put out there is, we just want to play football. We want to represent Nebraska, and we want to show what we've been working for. Great. Uh, last question. Uh, we'll close with Andy Kendi, KETV. Adrian, I'll ask you this, um, and, and um, Decap and uh, Matt, you can chime in as well. How difficult would it be if the Big Ten decides to pull the plug this fall, you guys can't figure out a schedule? How difficult would it be to play in the spring and then having two basic seasons in one calendar year. It would be difficult. And Coach Frost touched on that. And I'm not sure, um, even right now, as we're sitting here, we know all the complications and um, what, that, what that would even look like for us and what that would look like for the guys who have to turn around and play um, a short, maybe a short season and go and turn around playing in the fall right away. It would just be hard on the bodies, I think. I don't necessarily know if that's what's best for um, us as athletes. Now, I can't speak for everyone. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Um, but it would, it would be difficult. And uh, I think that's a part of the reason why we want to play so bad in the fall. And, and that's why it makes a little bit more sense in, in our minds to, to play. I think that's like more of something that you think of, um, you know, once it's actually um, – a thought that's like set in motion, you know, a plan that's set in motion. So as of right now, you know, they're saying that they're not, they're unsure if we're going to play in the fall. So right now, I think we just focus on whether we'll play in the fall or not. And then once they completely rule out, if, if we can't play in the fall, then we think about, you know, the possibility of playing in the spring. But as of right now, we just think about the now and think about the fall and just, you know, try to make it happen now. Matt, you want to finish up? I mean, DCAT pretty much hit it perfectly. Right now, our main focus is playing in the fall if that falls through and they move it to the spring then we'll figure it out from there right now I mean our main focus is we want to play in the fall and that's really all we're fighting for right now great thank you